Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Alberto Cotica, the research director of a company called Edge Riders. And this presentation was prepared together with colleagues from my own company and the University of Tartu. And it was developed in the course of a project called Pop Rebel, which is a Horizon 2020 project on European populism, especially in Central and Eastern Europe. And it's about Witness. Witness is a floating megacity built upon the waters of an ocean on a, of a post climate change future Earth. It doesn't exist, of course, it's a fictional universe, and it was created to serve as a backdrop for science fiction work, like novels, short stories, films, or games. It's very much like the Star Trek universe or the Harry Potter universe, but there are two differences with those. The first one is Witness is open source and participatory. So the word canon is encoded in a wiki, we call it Witnesspedia, and if the wiki expresses in encyclopedia format the salient facts of witness, such as history, geography, notable people, and so on. It has an open and wikified format, uh, which makes it easy to, to improve it, to extend it, and change through a Wikipedia-like process of discuss and edit. Uh, the open license of Witnesspedia makes this process legally smooth, as well as ensuring that content creators can set their work in witness and they don't have to worry about corporate lawyers coming calling. And the second difference is, as fictional universes go, witness is unusually detailed when it comes on in-world economy, including its economic institutions, such as currencies, central banks and planning authorities, economic policies, prevalent economic theories and economic history. So why are we doing this? Well, because there are indications that our current way to organize the economy and a way to know and prioritize economic facts, which we call economics, might be incompatible with the long-term viability of a sophisticated civilization in the wake of climate change and the environmental crisis at large. And scholars have been arguing this for decades, but now this is surfacing in official documents from normally conservative institutions, such as the European Environmental Agency, or, of course, the IPCC. And now, economics used to be the field where speculative alternative systems were dreamed up and compared against the current ones. That went on until the early 20th century with scholars such as Proudhon or Marx, and even Keynes in his more speculative work. But since, that was a stop, and economics retreated to extending and consolidating the dominant neoclassical paradigm, with some exception. And as Frederick Jameson famously said, it is easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. However, there is a group of people that do dream up alternative system, and these are uh, a, a small group of brainy and visionary science fiction authors. They have created fascinating renderings of whatever their life might be in alternative economies. These are people like Cory Doctorow, Bruce Sterling, Neil Stephenson, Peter Watts, and Kim Stanley Robinson. And this is very much needed because if we are going to make large scale change, we need to be able to think about what that would be like and get behind it. Uh, and a especially paradoxical element here is that the IPCC engages in extensive scenario planning, but those scenarios are not uh, actionable to the vast majority of citizens. They feel alien. They model facts in the natural world. For example, we predict a shift to the north of the line of boreal forest that will lead to the loss of substantial ecosystem services. They, it even predicts incompatibilities in the social and economic world. What it doesn't model is how this will affect our everyday life. In other words, what kind of world will we live in? And as I said, the process of building a, a witness is highly participatory. In this video, you can see a time lapse of the contributions of the community to Witnesspedia and the Witness Discussion Forum. And notice that, differently from some scenario practice, Witness has not attempted to engage powerful people like members of government, business leaders. The community consists mostly of people who are economists uh, or science fiction readers or both. The results of these processes are um, substantial in quantitative terms. We have 
36 witness PDR articles with 24 contributors. This is already 135,000 words, and the forum itself has almost 2,000 posts and over 200 contributors, and another 150,000 words. We have five short stories uh, uh, of science fiction setting witness and one online role-playing game. So quantitatively, it's, it's quite robust. Uh, and so why am I here? Well, because this is the Futures Conference, and Witness does bear a strong family resemblance with scenario practice as used in future studies and, and in foresight studies. For example, we can fairly easily place it in scenario taxonomies like this one proposed by Van Notten and collaborators. Furthermore, uh, scenario practice has been adapted over the decades to deal with discordant pluralism, which is a situation where multiple stakeholders need to agree on a course of action, or at least acknowledge their mutual interdependence, but they do not have a shared understanding of either possible futures or the present. And Verwoerd and others uh, claim that a concept from uh, 20th century philosophy called world making can be pressed into service in order to enable scenario practice to handle discordant pluralism. And they have this really nice quote in, in their paper where it, it says basically that if the world is think, thought of as, a, as, a, as many, as a, as a plurality, then people who have incompatible worldviews can still talk, can still interact. Uh, on witness, discordant pluralism has a vivid representation because the floating city contains several districts, each with this distinct economic system. Higa is a Nordic social democracy on steroids where people discuss Gini coefficient changes in the same way that our world discusses GDP growth rates. The assembly is based on cooperatives and a, a, a forbids selling shares of companies so that uh, concentration can't, help, can't happen and monopolies can't come into existence. And the covenant is based on a, a elaboration of the monastic economy built by the Benedictine movement in Europe starting from the 6th century AD. So uh, we chose this configuration because it creates narrative tensions. Uh, characters and therefore participants can travel across districts and perceive how the economy is different. Like uh, if, if fish could perceive different kinds of water by traveling to places where water is something, is something else. In the near future, we plan to develop witness along two axes. The first is to continue to expand and enrich it. Uh, and we are planning to do this via a full length science fiction novel. Its main author is going to be uh, Yudanjaya Vijaratne, a Sri Lankan author uh, who uh, already received a, a nomination for a Nebula Award. And he will work alongside a team of economists. The idea is, as Yuda writes a novel, the economists, myself included, will expand the wiki underpinning it. And so in, at the end, we should have both a, a fascinating and, and enjoyable uh, story and, and work of art set in witness, but also witness itself will be more textured and more, more concrete. The second axis of development of witness is a witness themed role playing game. And we have secured funding for a pilot and game session will start in September 2022. Uh, participants will be recruited mostly from Mediterranean coastal communities, notably Croatia, and will play decision makers in various witness districts, facing the rise of sea levels due to climate change. So different districts are based on different economies, so they have different strengths in manufacturing, welfare, provision of public services, and policy instruments. So they can use these to respond, again, differently to the same crisis. Uh, we are attracted by the idea of a game because it provides a way of engaging with the witness material that is both highly interactive and reasonably low effort, as opposed to, say, writing a description of how Higgs central bank works, which is a fairly technical and time consuming activity. Role playing games are indeed a promising avenue to provide a highly interactive and reasonably low effort engagement channel. And, and indeed, in the last decade, game designers often have engaged with climate change because it makes for a great game setting, one in which players make meaningful choices to push the game system in the direction they want, leading ultimately to the survival of civilization. Uh, so in climate change, we deal with large-scale, high-stakes transformations, 
Um, and that creates a situation where uh, one, people perceive an urge to act, but two, they cannot enact change by themselves, but need the cooperation of others. And three, they cannot enact change directly. We cannot simply dissipate CO2. We have to change our societies and economies so that the CO2 will be sequestered. Situations like these are great settings for games. And uh, indeed, uh, we have found at least two uh, uh, notable examples of games that approach this complexity in an open-ended scenario. And uh, these are called World Without Oil from the Institute for the Future and the World Bank's Urgent Evoke. Uh, both games explore possible crises and hypothetical futures engaging with collective intelligence. And uh, the, the engagement of players was long. It, it, playing a game like this takes eight to 10 weeks and it's organized around the crisis response uh, a gameplay. So the, the game throws a crisis at you and people have to uh, create some kind of content in which they address, they suggest how to address the crisis. And both games were presented as real life relevant. So World Without Oil's tagline was play it before you live it and Evoke was labeled a crash course in changing the world. Which brings me into the question of impact. So even if our novel and our game are reasonably successful, then what we get is an elaborate participatory scenario-like construct which interacts with thousands or you know, in a wild success scenario, tens of thousands of people as opposed to the current hundreds. But does that mean witness will then have impact? We hope to achieve impact by creating political space for radical reform to improve societal and ecological outcomes, even if this means calling into questions the way our current economy is organized. And how is political face, space created? Well, we hope it's created by fostering the awareness that the solution space is broader than formally thought. We can do things that are currently out of the Overton window. And indeed, games have a considerable track record for awareness raising using scenarios. Uh, so despite, despite various problems, uh, World Without Oil and Evoke did manage to attract large communities. Evoke had 8,000 players. Players had to research solutions that they could deploy in order to get through various crises, including global energy shortages, pandemics, and access to water. And there is no doubt that the players of those games did find themselves with substantially raised awareness of the various systems supporting our lifestyle. But awareness is not yet change. Witness was born as a thinking tool for a specific group of people, and it has worked quite well to improve our ability to imagine our own life in different economic systems. So its impact was meant to be in terms of individual learning. And now we are left wondering, as we grow the project, is it realistic to foresee a second order impact as that translates into action and that action into change? Scenario Party started back in the days of Rand Corporation, and at that time, its impact was straightforward. People with the power to make important decisions got to make better ones because of scenario practice. So from the seminar room, the policy was born, and from the policy, the change. But it is not clear how much this holds when the seminar room becomes a wiki, the participants are many and self-selected, and importantly, the effort and time investment needed to reap the learning benefits of creating witness are much larger than simply participating in a workshop. So the main trade-off that we see here is between effort and depth of the learning. If you choose to go for high effort and deep learning, as we did, many powerful people with busy calendars will simply not engage. So impact must rest on action undertaken by people in the witness community itself. And most of us are not that powerful. So in Croatia, we'll be targeting, especially civil society activists on environmental and societal issues in the hope to energize them and give them new tools for our advocacy. But that seems to be a very uncertain ground to promise impact. And so as a conclusion, Project Witness emerged as a thinking tool for economists in search of a theoretical inspiration. 
itself stimulated by growing evidence that the dominant paradigm in economics, neoclassical theory, has now become a liability, an obstacle to much needed radical reform. However, witness shows a strong family resemblance with scenario practice. So the two, witness and scenario practice, share some fundamental questions, like how to make collective choices in the face of discordant pluralism, and challenges, how to elicit the investment of time and attention needed for both to deliver the benefits. So I would like to end this presentation with a set of questions to this conference. Uh, given the similarities, your discipline has surely encountered problems similar to those of witness. How did you solve them? What are the main trade-offs you encountered? For example, is it more impactful to involve a small number of powerful, very busy high-level officials for one 45-minute session, or rather to build a self-selected community of participants that have time and passion, but not necessarily a lot of power? And with that, I'll leave the floor uh, to you for your questions and hopefully for your answers.